Hey everyone, you're probably wondering what I'm doing down here on the floor today. Well, let me explain a little bit about what I got going on and why I'm on the floor. So let's go in for a closer look. All right, so back in May of this year, I was at Maker Central and I ran into a company called Oozenest and they're based out of the UK and they had a CNC that I found pretty interesting. It was a little bit different uh, system than the current belt drive system that I have from Shapeoko and after talking to them for a while I expressed interest in it and they said hey let us send you one and you can test it out and I had no idea what I was getting into I built the Shapeoko and it was a really quick build uh, a lot of it is really put together and made to be super simplistic so that pretty much anyone can put it together in a very short period of time so this shows up and I'll have to say, uh, I posted a lot about it on both TikTok and on Instagram. I was a little overwhelmed when I saw how many pieces and parts there were. And <clears throat> I have to say, that was unwarranted, completely unwarranted. They have some of the most amazing documentation that I've ever seen uh, from any company. With the number of parts that they have, everything is well marked. Let's see here. I got a box and I'll tell you, if you look back at some of my older stuff and I might even actually be able to add some of it in here so that you can get kind of an idea of what I was talking about. But I was initially throwing away all the boxes and all the bags that everything came in. And finally I said, you know, maybe I should keep, keep some of this, but I mean, this is just, I mean, this is probably a 10th of the, the number of Ziploc bags that they, that they sent with parts in them so you can imagine uh, getting not just thousands of parts but hundreds of plastic Ziploc bags it seemed like a daunting task and and I did work on it over a quite a long period of time because if I had 10 minutes here 10 minutes there or 30 minutes here I would sit down and I would start putting a few parts together and the directions are such that that is actually something you could do, or you could just pile through it. It might take you a day or two to really just get into it and pile through it. But I think if you like putting things together, and I found that I actually really enjoyed the process, uh, this is something that you could do easily on your own. So let's take a look, a uh, closer look, let's say, at the ooze nest and some of the things that I found interesting. One of the first things is, it's screw drive and even better the screw drive is tucked in underneath the v-slot so a lot of the dust that would normally get on this rail if the screw drive was on the outside or above it would get covered in dust very easily but with this system it's pretty much tucked away so that's going to be I think that's a really good design feature Ultimately, though, I can blow off any dust that gets on this pretty easily. What's kind of compelling about this particular setup is you can choose to put your wasteboard up top like I did, or it will fit inside down below, and that gives you like an extra four inches. I like that feature because while I have it in this configuration currently, in the future I may change my mind and I might be doing products that would require it to be at a much lower level and I need more headspace. Another thought I had about this, because all of these parts, all this extrusion is off the shelf, I could order longer parts and extend this or widen this if I so desired. It's really a nifty design as far as for expansion. But what's really, really amazing to me is the price point. It's so low that pretty much anyone who's interested in getting into CNCing can get into this uh, at a very low cost. And I think that the price point is so low that your return on investment, if you decided to sell some of your products, you could get it back really quick and pay for another CNC if you wanted to. You could have two or three of these going. As I've been sharing this build on social media, 
people have asked me, why do you need two CNC's or three CNC's or whatever? Well, one of my goals is to get to a point where I've got several products that I want to produce and they're not going to be expensive products. They'll be inexpensive. But when you're producing inexpensive products, the only way you can make money with it is to produce a lot of them. And having a CNC, or better yet, two CNCs, gives you the opportunity to increase production considerably. Or have multiple setups for different types of products. Or a third option is have one setup for one part of a process and the other one set up for a different part of that same process on the same product. So you've got time savings and multiplication of your effort by having more than one CNC. And because these are so inexpensive, it doesn't make it impossible to do that. And I'm sure there's some people saying, well, why don't you just buy a more expensive CNC that's faster? And that may happen down the line. But currently, A, the location I'm at, getting a big CNC in and out of this location is not going to be easy. Second, the return on investment, I would have to be producing a lot of products to pay off a larger format CNC. And then the last thing, I could actually use these smaller CNCs to eventually purchase that larger CNC. So these guys will actually be my conduit to a bigger CNC, but I'm going to have to move before that happens. I'm not quite ready to give up my garage and I do have a pretty good sized basement but access to my basement is a little bit difficult. I had a really tough time moving a laser in here which isn't nearly as heavy as a CNC is and some CNC's do come in parts that are larger format but uh, I'm already at a point where I'm building bunk beds for these CNC's so having uh, another CNC or a bigger CNC might be a little difficult in my current location. All right, I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to talk about today on the Oosnest Workbee. Coming up, I'm gonna have a video where I do an entire project from beginning to end, acquiring my image, putting it into the software, and running it through. That will probably be the very next video that I do. After that, I'm going to do a comparison of the Shape Oco and the Workbee with the exact same file to see if there's any differences. My gut feeling is there won't be any differences, but I wanted to be able to test it. In addition to that, I am currently working on a project for Open Builds. I'm building an enclosure for the mini mill. Open Builds makes a mini mill. The enclosure is going to uh, allow me to take that mini mill into schools, to maker fairs, and demonstrate what you can do with a CNC on a smaller scale. Uh, it's a great little build. Uh, the, the enclosure makes it so that anybody can see from any direction what's happening with the actual process. I'm building this enclosure. I didn't come up with it. I'm building it based on Nick from Run CNC. He came up with this enclosure design. I'm basically visually looking at what he did and then trying to estimate the, the numbers and create basically the exact same thing. So I'll have a video on that coming up. I'm working on that today, as a matter of fact. And uh, I'm, out of, I'm out of town for the next week. I'll be at Fabtech. So if you're at Fabtech, hey, I hope to see you there. Uh, like I said, I'll have links to everything down in the description. Hey, if you like this kind of content, please smash that subscribe button. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. I'd be glad to answer them. And as always, have a great day.